In this episode of Motive Tech, we take a look at the last oil filter you'll ever need. Now, tech features and project cars are my favorite things to make on our YouTube channel because I get to learn more, you guys get to learn more, and we can build better cars from that knowledge. Now, some people think that we get paid to feature products, but the reality is my attitude with our project cars and tech features is we approach companies that have a product that we like, that we know works, and if we get to work together, great. If we don't, well, I might just have to buy it. And sometimes a product comes along that I just go, you know what, I really like that, and I want to share that with our audience. I did that with the accumulator and a lot of our GTR tuning tips videos were exactly that. Now this product is the same sort of deal. It is the clear view filtration oil filters. Now I was doing some corporate work for Race Max Direct, a lot of V8 products, uh, and they basically showed me this. They were going to pay me to do a sales video on it for them, but I said no, I want to use one on Jet 200 and I'll do a feature on it because I like the product. And since then, I've seen this get used on Jun 2, the quickest street GDR in the world, and I've seen the guys at Nitto use it on their oil pump dyno and seen so many benefits from it that I went out and bought my own one for our R32 GTR. So let's get straight to it. Why is this product awesome? Pretty simple, really. Clear view filtration, as the name suggests, means you can actually see inside your oil filter. And why is that so beneficial? Well, what it means is you can actually monitor the health of your engine and you can pick up on a problem early and save from a catastrophic failure. Most important example of that is basically if you have a bearing problem. Now, if you started to cause bearing damage and you can't see that and you keep running the car all weekend, essentially that bear accelerated bearing wear can lead to, well, a complete failure of a bearing which can put a rod out the block. But if you can pick up early bearing damage, you can basically say to yourself, well, don't turn the car on again, let's get the engine out, strip it down, and it might become an easy repair. So these filters are heavily used in drag racing at all the big sort of two, three, four, five thousand horsepower stuff for that exact reason. You can do a run, come back, you then use this little pressure port to blow compressed air in and blow the oil off the filter itself so you can see any material on there. Now, some of you might ask, what about the microscopic material that you can't see? Well, in a race car, think about this. You're probably going to do a run, in some cases, and then change the oil, or you're going to race for a weekend and then change the oil. So the microscopic particles that this 115 micron filter may not pick up aren't going to really do any damage over a weekend. But there is an option for this. You can then get a normal spin-on oil filter to put onto the four or six inch one. So if you're going to put this in a street car, you now get the clear view filter that allows you to look at the oil itself and monitor its condition, and you also get a normal filter on there to protect the engine the same way that a normal oil filter would. Now there is another benefit of these clear view filters, spit carrying on from that, that people don't think about, and that is their ability to hold huge oil pressure. Some spin-on oil filters just start to struggle after 80 psi, and if you go over 100 psi they can expand, balloon, and break. While this, it's pretty strong when it's made out of billet and sandwiched together, can handle a lot of oil pressure. So if you've got an RB, especially with a billet block, running over 100 psi, you may go for this option that has no spin-on filter on it, and the element inside, that is your only filtration. And that's the other thing to look at, is how much filtration you can do. These spin-on filters, most of them have a paper element inside, and obviously could restrict flow. If you want maximum flow, and you want over 100 psi in your 2,000 horsepower RB, then this may May be the best option just quite simply because look at the size of the six inch clear view it flows a lot not just with dash 12 inlet and outlet and double inlets and outlets if you have a look inside we'll pull it apart basically that is your filtration 115 micron steel filter in this one and the whole idea is it will catch anything that you can see with the naked eye yes some microscopic particles are going to make it through there but like i said if you are driving a race car the type of microscopic particles that make it through aren't going to damage the engine instantly that's the type of stuff that causes wear over thousands of kilometers if you're changing your oil a lot which we are with circuit cars and drag cars then this is perfect. If you have a look inside, billet construction is actually really good. If you have a look at the top, 
plenty of flow and two inlets. So in theory, if you need a double dash 12 inlet and double dash 12 outlet, you're going to get plenty of flow out of this. Uh, obviously the window itself allows you to look through and if you undo all of this, you can actually replace that window. Why would you need to replace that window? Well, it's a plastic acrylic style material. So if you're on methanol and E85, eventually it'll probably go cloudy. So at some stage you may need to replace it. On the bottom, check this out. You've also got a couple of ports here that can actually be pressure ports to go to something like a turbocharger, uh, variable valve timing. So you've actually now got a couple of extra pressure ports. You may decide you just want to put a gauge on there as well, depending on what you want to do. But this is a handy little way to get some extra oil pressure lines to go to somewhere else in the engine. So if you're comparing the four inch and the six inch, you can see where they get their name. That is purely just based on the size of the screen filter inside them. Which one do you need? Well, it depends on your car, how much oil pressure you want to run, etc., etc., etc. My advice is pretty much anything that's like a factory style oil pressure application or is slightly increased four inches heaps but if you've got over 100 psi in a you know 1500 horsepower rb or you've got a lsx twin turbo making 1500 horsepower and extra oil pressure or you've got a dry sump you probably want to go for the six inch option so you can talk to race max direct and get a bit of advice on which one to go for and what application but essentially factory sort of style systems you want to go for four inch while big setups is the six inch. We're gonna put the six inch in our GDR, the four inch in our 200 SX. With our GTR, it's purely more about extreme oil pressure that we're gonna have with our billet Nido oil pump. So that's why we need the six inch. Now, another little advantage of that clear window is when the car is running, you can actually see the oil flowing through. You can see if there's any cavitation, you can see if there's any discoloration. Uh, is your oil going milky is another thing you can look at as well. So our plan from here is we're gonna be installing the four inch filtration unit with a spin-on filter. We probably didn't need it, but we decided to get it anyway. This is going into our Time Attack Car Jet 200. The four inch one is obviously just smaller. It still has dash 12 inlet and outlet, but it can only go single inlet and outlet. Uh, and this one has the spin-on filter. It's actually a gigantic filter designed for Chevys. So it's got plenty of flow, plenty of capacity. Another little bonus as well is oil capacity. That spin-on filter and this four inch clear view filtration oil filter unit together probably hold four, 500 mils of oil. So you're actually getting more oil capacity into your engine as well, which is obviously always gonna be a good thing. So when it comes to mounting the clear view filter, it's pretty easy. They come with a bracket that you can see here. You just gotta obviously fabricate something up to hold it, but you have to make sure it sits level. Uh, the Perspex screen has to be level so that when you look in there, you can see the material rather than everything fall away from it. In terms of mounting it into the car, you've got quite a few options with a lot of these, and that is you can make it go in and out on the same side, or you can make it go in and out the other side. So based on how you want to install it inside your particular application for your car. So installation is pretty straightforward and we're going to be putting it into Jet 200 and the six inch into our R32 GTR in future project car episodes.